nothing. Okay. People in Portland today are gathering to push back against hate. The Say No to Racism rally starts at 530 right at Congress Square Park. Organizers hold these rallies every month, but today's event comes after last weekend's hate march through downtown part of the city. That's when more than a dozen members of a known Nazi group, the National Socialist Club, or NSC 131, paraded through Portland on Saturday. They started at the Greater Portland Immigrant Welcome Center. They marched to Monument Square and then on to City Hall. Members of the group held a sign that read, Defend White Communities. That's where members of the hate group... <laughs> Defend White Communities. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that, man? These guys are trying, man. At least they're trying. They're putting up a good fight. These guys are putting up a good fight. Defend white communities. And that read, defend white communities. That's where members of the hate group got into a fight with counter protesters, with one of those protesters saying he was punched by a member of NSE 131 right in front of police officers. One officer reportedly pulled out his gun and yelled at everyone to get down. People in Do you glad to have anything exciting going on? Is there anything? Okay. What's this? Morning rush in 90 seconds or less. A man from Maine accused of plotting to attack mosques in Chicago is expected to plead guilty today. 19-year-old Xavier Pelkey was arrested in February of last year after police say they found ISIS flags and homemade bombs at his home in Waterville. Last month, Pelkey signed a plea agreement admitting to conspiring to provide material support to terrorists. He's facing up to 15 years in prison. Okay, so you got that going on. Man, you glad it's a real buzz kill. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. And you wonder why I want to move there. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Is it any? Okay, I think this might be something. Let's see this one. The York County Sheriff's Office says someone brought a weapon to Massabesic High School in Waterboro recently. In a joint statement, Sheriff William King and RSU 57 say video and photos of that incident came to light Monday night. After an investigation, one person was arrested. More arrests, they say, may be coming. What the statement does not say is who was arrested, what the weapon was, or whether that incident happened during the school day. So we contacted the Sheriff's Office for clarification. We have not heard back. Several Massabesic students, though, were issued criminal trespass notices that bans them from school property. Okay. Jeez. Right. Nothing going on up here. There's nothing going on up here, man. Um. Oh, here we go. Portland isn't the only municipality in the situation. Some other smaller communities are preparing to do their part. The town of Brunswick is expecting to welcome dozens of asylum seeking families from June through October. They'll be living in new housing on the old Naval Air Station base. New Center Marines Chloe Tebow has more about how officials are preparing. <laughs> exciting. We're, a, we're an older state. We need young families. We need a workforce. An exciting era for Brunswick as town leaders prepare to welcome more asylum seekers to the area. We're expecting about 60 new families to join us 
um, over the summer and into the fall. Brunswick Town Councilor Abby King says they- Why she so, so happy about this? Why is this white woman happy, man? Is <laughs> because she's never interacted with them. <laughs> about 60 new families to join us um, over the summer and into the fall. Brunswick Town Councilor Abby King says these families will be living in five new buildings in the old Naval Air Station base with 12 one- and two-bedroom units each. It's just not something that one community can do or even one region in the state can do. Brunswick Town Manager John Eldridge says he recognizes larger communities like Portland need help managing a recent surge in asylum seekers. But this is still a big change for Maine's largest town. We had um, a group of about 20 families come in 2019. Um, this is obviously three times that. We weren't very prepared with our... <laughs> These people are fucking... So you're bringing in... All these people look sub-Saharan. It's This looks like a whole sub-Saharan crew right here. Oh, huh. God. We had um, a group of about 20 families come in 2019. Um, this is obviously three times that. We weren't very prepared with our first group of families. Uh, we learned from that. Brunswick's Director of Human Services, Deb Crocker, says she's looking for local volunteers to lend a hand. Help families learn English, take families to their medical appointments, show the families around their new so basically they're looking for a bunch of flunkies for these goddamn <laughs> sub-saharan african fucking asylum seekers can you come and be a lackey for these sub-saharan africans Y'all are truly different, man. I'll give you that, man. Y'all are consistent. I'll give Gladys this. The same way with the sun, man. Y'all are the same everywhere we go. Y'all are the same everywhere. I'll give you that. I'll give you for consistency, man. And help families learn English, take families to their medical appointments, show the families around their new surroundings. The Brunswick School Department is also preparing, expecting we'll see quite a few new students, especially young students. Do we need teachers um, who will be teaching English to students who are... So now they're going to be sending their kids to school with your kids. Um, don't be surprised if you start seeing private schools and Catholic schools popping up around Portland, man. Students, especially young students. Do we need teachers um, who will be teaching English to students who are coming with a varying um, levels of language proficiency? Varying levels that can pose a challenge to learning. We need to help our teachers learn how do you how do you meet that wide range of learners that aren't coming in all knowing the same thing and try to get them to grow and advance and learn um, to high levels. A lot of questions with just months to answer them. In Brunswick, Chloe Tebow, New Center, Maine. Town Councilor Abby King says these asylum seekers will live in new units at the Brunswick Landing for two years. After that, half of the units will go to market rate, while the other half continue to operate as affordable housing units. So you got that, right? They're building new houses, right? You see that? They're building new houses for these fucking, um, <laughs> they're building all new houses for these fucking um, asylum seekers, right? Got it? They're building, they're, I mean, they broke ground, fresh new places for these asylum seekers to, to live. Even though in their country they would be living in squalor. These people would be living in fucking tenements in squalor on top of each other, fucking open sewers and shit. But you're building them state-of-the-art shit. Let's see how they treat, let's see how white people treat their own. 
Homelessness is not just a city problem. Rent prices in more rural parts of the state have doubled or even tripled over the past few years, while the average person's monthly income remains relatively the same. And that has a lot of people facing homelessness asking, if I can't afford to live here, then where can I go? Here's New Center Maine's Chloe Tebow. <laughs> the Johnsons seem like your typical family. So this little blonde here, white girl, don't have a fucking place to lay her head. But goddamn ooh, foo foo and fucking <laughs> fucking under shukalumo got a brand new fucking standard art fucking condo and shit. Y'all are fucking crazy, man. Oh, act have no doubt there is money going being put in to black in this state. This is not being You're done typical. by accident. Oh, yeah, I, I agree. But I'm just saying it's still like you you guys are uh, just like some people aren't victims. Of, uh, you guys aren't victims, man. You guys are doing this shit to yourselves, man. <laughs> the Johnsons seem like your typical family of four. This is all your toys, Jay. Two adults and two kids under the age of 10. Hi. But the place they've been calling home recently isn't quite so typical. It has four wheels and an engine. And now we are two months on this awesome journey. Uh, been staying in our car. Not for nothing, man. They look like the real life Raisin Arizona, man. The couple from Raisin Arizona. Like, seriously, man. Shit, man. It's a rough looking couple right there, man. That's what drug use does to you. Two months on this awesome journey, uh, been staying in our car. Jessica says in April, her family gave their 30 days notice on their most recent apartment after experiencing issues with sewage water leaking into their bathroom and flooding the basement. She says they thought they would be able to find another place easily in the rural Rumford area. But so far, it just feels like endless. It's like endless. You think you got your hopes up and then something happens. Something like new landlords refusing to accept the Johnson's emergency rental assistance, a program that began in response to the pandemic to help eligible people pay for rent and utilities. But according to Maine Housing, landlords can't be required to participate. Most places you go look at, you find a three bedroom, they want $1,600 for it a month. And then the landlord wants you to make three times the amount of the rent. He says for them, that's just not possible. The Johnsons are living on a fixed income of a little more than $2,000 per month since Brian, Jessica, and their daughter received disability through Social Security. Every month, we're broke by the time the bills come through anyway. To get help and find a community, the Johnsons have been coming off and on to the Beacon House Peer Recovery Center, which has been around since 1991. It acts as a resource for people experiencing challenges related to mental health, substance use, and homelessness. Jenna Mason is the center's manager. People become really vulnerable here, and it's been a very safe environment. The atmosphere is welcoming. Mason says she has been in Rumford since 2006 and has recently noticed a growing need when it comes to housing. More so lately, we've had people coming here. People walking in, saying that they're homeless. A couple, we were able to give them a sleeping bag and a tent. Um, another, we were able to use our community funds to help them get a campsite. As for the reasons why... The new landlords coming into town, um, they're coming from out of state, um, they're raising up the rents. The cost of living, um, the rents have definitely gone up over time. Michelle Wordley works across town as the director of homeless services at Rumford Group Homes, one of the only shelters in the area. We've had a couple of families that have come into the shelter um, when I first started 10 years ago. Well, now their kids are grown up having kids of their own. They've also come back into shelter. A cycle of homelessness that can be hard to escape in this economy. They're still going off the same salaries. They're still going off what everybody used to be making. It was hard enough for families to be able to afford housing, you know, then, let alone now. The poverty issues have just, I think, completely increased, you know, from 
from COVID, if you will. Jolene Bedard with the United Way of Androscoggin County says she gets calls daily from people on the verge of homelessness. It's heartbreaking. Heartbreaking and hard to find solutions. People that are um, on the verge of homelessness in rural areas, the transportation is a, probably a, a barrier for a lot of people. And that transportation could be... Um, so homelessness is plague. This little fucking blonde hair white girl living in the back of a fucking station wagon and shit. And you got fucking